Future trading involves risk and is not suitable for all investors. Content provided in this segment is meant for educational purposes and is not a solicitation to buy or sell commodities. Hi, today is September 21st, uh, 2 o'clock. Welcome to uh, another edition of Grain Gab. With me is Kristen Steen and I'm Lori Nelson. And uh, we're just going to talk about some specifics that we're working through with our client base. Kristen, it's uh, it's it's almost go time. So what have we been working on with producers and what should we be looking at? Yeah, harvest is, is upon us. I've I've been hearing the combines roll here recently. So been out my window, I get to see a, a pretty busy highway and I get to see a lot of them going by and trucks and green carts and all that good stuff. So um, I, I mean, the main things that I'm working with guys on right now, uh, when it comes to their plan is one, making sure their harvest needs are met, right? By way of set and basis or the bushels that they anticipate hauling in. Um, the contracts that they don't need to use this fall, we're making sure we get those rolled out to the proper month after that for delivery. But one of the things that I really wanted to touch on um, that we're spending a lot of time is rolling those puts up and out to a different futures month and potentially a different strike level too. And, you know, why would we do that? Why wouldn't we just let them expire? Well, I think, I mean, for part of that there's a couple different reasons right the first one is your marketing rule number two right understand and accept that you can't control or predict the markets make the best decisions with the information you already have and number six identifying risks and opportunities and having plans to manage both that basically is the essence of what we're trying to do here we're trying to understand that we can't predict the market. So we don't know if this harvest is going to be like the last two years where we start here and then the market just keeps on going higher or where it's like a normal harvest where we we come, we fall out of bed because there's plenty of supply finally coming into this market. And then we hit this winter lull, we'll call it. Um, quite frankly, we don't know. And, and in these volatile of markets, it's one of those things that we need to understand that there's a lot more opportunity out there than what there normally is, but there's a lot more risk too. And we need to make sure that we're managing both of those sides. And so you talk about the upside and my mind goes to, you know, the last crop report we had with, uh, they dropped corn yields, they dropped bean yield. Um, we came into a tighter carry out to that, that would build a bullish story to me oh, now yeah. we're, talk- we're talking about puts and rolling those out and protecting uh, a floor and what's bearish to me is just some of the macroeconomics the world economics that could um, definitely shift a year on us and we look at profitability and what we need to be protecting would be another reason why we would want to roll those puts out and up on unpriced bushels. And you just did a piece um, from the furrow with Steve and you talked about, he talked a lot about the macroeconomics of um, of things shifting. Yeah, a hundred percent. I mean, he, he spent a lot of time on that global demand and that's something that we're really concerned about. But again, I wanna stay optimistic, right? And so, what, I mean, Let's kind of dig into the weeds of that, right? Take a look at December 22 corn and follow along with me a little here. When you sit there and we're, we're coming up to expiration here on those puts at the end of November. Okay, so time is starting to dwindle in on us. A lot of guys, as that market fell out of bed, rolled those puts down, which is a great thing. They're sitting anywhere between a 580 or a 590 strike price. And now the markets rally back up for us. As as my kids say, mommy, the markets go up and the markets go down. That, in fact, they have done because of a lot of things, a lot of the things that you just touched on and that Steve touched on from the furrow. Now, as we're digging into that, we're saying, okay, should we let these options expire or should we do something to manage them forward? I think the biggest question you have to ask yourself is, are you ready to price everything now? Or are you wanting to leave yourself a little bit open? Seven dollar corn. Why would I roll my puts up and out? I mean, Lori, are you going to price everything today, or can the market go higher? 
I don't know, Kristen. It could yeah. do either. It could do either. And I yeah. would really look at from a risk management point of having that protection. So and be if, able to price higher. Yeah. And if you're not ready to price everything now, whether it's because you're uncertain of the yield that's still sitting in the field and you're just getting into there, or you're like, who knows, right? This thing could go anywhere at this point. If you're not for whatever reason you're not willing to price it, you then need to be willing to protect it. If you're Agreed. willing to price it, then we, that's a whole nother conversation. And mm -hmm. I'm more than happy to have that with you. Right. But at the end of the day, we can't predict that this is going to be the peak right off of the, the dollar twenty dollar forty rally that we've had in corn. But we certainly can sit there and take advantage of it and raise that floor up. And so just a quick example, right? If you can take a 590 December put and roll it out to March futures, which gives us to the end of February. And then you can also roll it up to 620, right? So you're gaining 30 cents in the strike protection and you're gaining, what is that? Three, four more months worth of protection as well for 12, 13 cents which then allows you to sit there and be patient to see if we can bust out of this $7 cap and start nearing those old highs, or are we going to be capped off? It gives you a little bit of that comfortability to be able to, to watch and see how things progress on. Yeah, and you protect yourself on the downside. Um, yes, yes, I, I get what you're saying, but if I get $7 corn, why would I roll my puts out? It's seven dollars right now. Are you willing to sell it? <laughs> so, so that's the thing there. Profit isn't realized until you actually sell it as a producer, right? Sell mm -hmm. it or protect it. It's one or the other, right? We can't have our cake and eat it too. That as we're going, and it, the same thing on beans, right? Let's let's switch on over to there. So, as you're looking at that as well. We're coming up, the end of October is when those November put options will expire. So we really need to take a look at what we want to do there as well. 200 million bushel carryout isn't substantial by any means, right? So there should be plenty of room for opportunity. But at the same point, we've got issues with China. We've got issues with the value of our dollar, with global recessionary talk. You name it, there's issues out there that'll keep this pendulum swinging back and forth. And so let's take a look at, let's say your average strike price is at 1360. Roll it out to January, extend yourself some time. I've personally had guys stepping in and buying a $14 put. And just with decent support being in that $13 area, sell a $13 underneath that to cheapen it up, right? And that, that strategy altogether has been running around 15, 16 cents too. So you know, you're not spending an arm and a leg, especially for the fact that it gives you unlimited upside on the bushels that are unpriced. What an awesome opportunity, right? And and let's say that that money spent was a waste of money, but what did it do? It gave you the peace of mind going into harvest saying, I've got this, I've got this floor sitting around 620. I've got more time on it. And it should the market rally, that's where my real opportunity is. But I don't have to sit there and second guess as to what the market's going to do. Because at the end of the day, nobody knows what the markets are going to do. Yeah. And, you know, you look at just volatility in the grains, corn, soybeans, that volatility's dropped a bit and a, a really good opportunity to be looking at rolling your options out mm -hmm. at this time. 100%. So, it's made it a lot cheaper yeah. to be able to do so. So here's your opportunity, folks. So, yes, that's what you've been busy doing. That's what uh, all of us have been busy doing right now. Anything else you'd like to add for our folks listening in today? You know, as we get started in harvest, I just wish you all a very productive harvest, but a safe one at that. So uh, stay safe out there. Have a good one and, and enjoy this beautiful time of the year. Sounds good, Kristen. Thanks for your time. And uh, we'll catch up with you soon. Take care, everyone. Bye.